What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate y'all coming today and checking this out. If you hadn't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're going to get started. Okay, one of my previous videos, I talked about how to, to quit your full-time job and go into taxidermy full-time. Just quit 100% and just do this for a living. On well, there, I gave some pointers of, of what I did uh, to prepare me financially to be able to come in here and do this, uh, you know, starting out. It's kind of tough. But anyhow, I'm going to expand a little bit. On, on this video, I'm going to talk about the two most important things to be successful when you are working for yourself doing taxidermy full time. Uh, I want to begin by saying the worst, probably the worst thing that I was ever told as far as somebody giving me advice in business was we are here to make money, not to make friends. Now, I'm sure that I bet 99% of y'all have heard that before. Now, here's the problem I've got with that, okay? There is no way that anybody is going to want to come and do business with you if they do not think that you like them a little bit. If you act like you were just there to take their money, they're going to come once, and that's going to be it. It's going to be a one-and-done, out-the-door kind of deal. Uh, I understand the idea that you can't give people favoritism. You can't give them discounts because they're they're your buddy, you know, because you've got to make money. But but my suggestion as an alternative to that that quote would be to, to tell your employees or, or to yourself or whatever that you need to be honest with your customers. And if they can accept that, they need to go somewhere else. Okay? All right, well, that being said, we're gonna start out with the second most important thing that you need to know to be successful in your taxidermy shop, okay? And it's gonna come as a surprise because it's, neither one of these has anything to do with quality of your work, okay? Second most important thing, how you set your pricing because you, you've got to be able to pay your bills. So I'm going to tell y'all my price structure and how I do things. Okay, right now, as of today, I'm charging $500 a deer. Okay, that is just a base price. That's for a regular shoulder mount, no plaque, just a shoulder, wall pedestal, floor pedestal, or regular shoulder mount. Okay, and that's all standard. That's no finished pedestals. That's just skin on foam with some antlers on it. All right, well, the way I do it, I take a deposit. The deposit is $250. Without that minimum, I will not touch the deer. I won't start on it. Okay, now I'm gonna cape it. I'm gonna cape the deer when they bring it to me. That cape fee is $40. $40. So that way, if they decide to come pick their deer up later, you're not out you know, your labor time just for caping a deer head so that they can take it somewhere else, which never happens. But you, you want to have that assurance that you're getting paid for your work. Okay, so based on that deposit, what I do is, it's $250 deposit. That's required for me to put your deer in line to be mounted. I won't order the supplies or anything until I get that $250. Now, what they've got is an option to be able to pay anything more toward their paid in full payment. So if somebody decides to pay me $500, then they're first in line. The amount they pay decides and determines their place in line based on when it's going to be mounted. Now you've got to make sure that you let them know that's no guarantee on turnaround time. All that is, is reserving your place in line. You know, so what it, what it will do is if, if you bring me a deer in January and nobody has paid in full and you pay in full, then you're the next person's deer that, I mean, your deer's the next that gets mounted as soon as the supplies are here. Okay, that's done 
several different things for me, two, two main things. Number one, the customers have the option, the ones that want their deer back fast can pay. The ones that don't are okay with the wait. And they understand that from the get-go, which is very beneficial because it means less phone calls, less stress on the customer, which in turn is less stress on the taxidermist. Okay, second thing is, I've gotten to where now there's probably close to 70 to 80% of my customers that pay in full at drop-off. So, they all get put in line in the order that they have paid me, and I get 70 to 80% of my yearly income within three months of the year. So, I, I'm able to take out all of my expenses and set it aside in a different account so that I can buy supplies. I can go ahead and order ahead, you know, which, which prepares me for, for, you know, any kind of out of stocks, back orders, that sort of thing. I'm able to stay ahead of the game. Working in retail for 25 years taught me that. You know, there's times there's gonna be shortages. And if you don't stay ahead, you're just gonna end up just like every other taxidermist, you're gonna be behind and you're not gonna be able to get caught back up. You can't, you, it doesn't work that way, especially if you're a one man shop. All right, something else I do. I, I do an expedited fee. So it's a hundred dollar bill, 100 bucks. If you pay me an extra hundred dollars, your deer is ordered the day you pay me. The reason for that is it doesn't make me an extra hundred dollars, but that hundred dollars covers the cost of shipping for that one deer head, because it's almost the same price as it is to order four or five at a time. It'll cover that, that high shipping cost, and it will also cover the discount that I get for ordering a $1,000 minimum at a time. So I'm allowed to, I'm able to go ahead and just order that all at one time, that day, get it in, and I mount it just as soon as I've got the, the deer tanned and ready to go. So I mean, you know, best case scenario, you're looking at a three week turnaround time for that extra $100. Surprisingly enough, I had over 20 people do that this past season. They really like that option. And like I said, the guys that's got the money and want their deer back, it works out great for both people. I get, I get my money up front, I get the deer out the door, they're happy with it, and, they, and it's not in my way anymore, and they've got their deer back faster than any of their buddies, which it works out great. Okay, next thing, merchandising. Uh, as far as when it comes to getting paid, a great way to getting paid a little bit more here or there and giving the customer an option for payment is merchandising, something that we do in retail all the time. And I've, I've kind of brought it into the taxidermy shop. What I do is I offer a $50, uh, $50 charge for finishing the back of a wall pedestal with the leather and a piece of rope, you know, so that it looks nice. Extra 50 bucks. Uh, same thing with, uh, say, floor pedestals. You know, they don't have to buy a floor pedestal. I can just give them the deer with the, the post sticking out of the bottom of it, and they can get a pedestal themselves or whatever. But if they want the pedestal, they've got the option to pay extra for that, have all that assembled on site. As far as plaques, I do a $50 plaque, which I make myself, cut it, router it, all that stuff. There's another video I've got uh, on how to do that. Uh, also, the name plates, I charge $10 a piece. So all that can be separate. You know, it can all be sold separately rather than somebody having to have this amount for this deer and that's just the way it is. It, it allows people to pay, you know, less or more. Uh, also, take, take uh, payments. You know, the way that I've worked out my payment system, if somebody pays in full, you know, they get put at the front of the line behind the last person that paid in full. But I also allow people to make payments. So if they give me a $250 deposit in January, will come June or July, if they decide they want to pay me an extra $100, wherever they were at in line, once that goes up to $350 deposit, they'll get put in line right behind the last person that paid $350. So each time they pay more, it moves them up a little bit along the line. You know, and like I said, some of those things, it's just beneficial. It, it gives you interaction with the customer. They know what's going on and the ball is back in their hands. So it's no longer your responsibility to get their deer finished as soon as possible. It's their responsibility to make sure that they have access 
to a quick turnaround time. And it works out good, like I said. Okay, that was actually the second most important thing is, is how you get paid. First most important thing is your reputation. Without your reputation, you will never make money. Okay, over the long term, I have got guys that's been bringing me deer since the first year I ever even attempted mountain deer. They were friends of mine, guys I grew up with, some of my best friends, family, that let me mount a deer, then let me mount another one, then two more. And I'm talking about deer that was, it was shoddy work, man. Like it, some of that stuff looked bad, especially looking back at it now. But they knew me. And what I learned really quick was that as their friends of, of, of theirs and then friends of friends started bringing me their deer, they brought them just because they knew me and trusted me. It had nothing to do with my quality of work. Zero. They just, they liked, they liked dealing with me. All right, let's break that down a little bit. How you, how you create a reputation in your taxidermy shop. First thing is honesty. When somebody walks in your door, a lot of times, what they're going to ask you is, uh, what, what are you looking at as far as turnaround time? Okay, the answer to that question can make or break you. The, on social media, the thing that I hear the most complained about taxidermists is that, you know, my guy said he was going to be done in three months. Now he's had it for eight and won't return my phone calls. You know, worst thing you can do is tell somebody too short of a turnaround time. Uh, what, what I average is three deer per week. So I tell them, I normally average three deer per week. This is how many deer ahead of yours. So based on that math, your deer is right here according to your deposit amount. Okay, still no guarantee. The thing I also let them know is it's never taken me longer than a one year period to get done with a deer head. And when you tell them one year, make sure they understand that that's 365 days. That's not from deer season to deer season, which is only about seven months here in Alabama. They've got to know that is a 365 day period. You know, and if you explain to them that you've got to take enough deer so that you have to work every day, five days a week, like a normal person, that's how many it takes to make a living. So somebody is going to be at the end of the line. I don't care if everybody pays in full, it's going to take you to 365 days to do somebody's just because you've got to have work every day. You know, you've got to, you've got to take that many in. That's just the way it is. And if you're up front with people and you tell them that right there up front, they will respect you for that. And they're okay with it. I mean, if you tell somebody it's going to take you two years to get done with their deer head, they can say, okay, or they can leave and take it to somebody else. But they go in at the beginning understanding that they dropped their deer off for a two-year turnaround time. You know, you tell them three months and you have it for three and a half, they start getting a little bit nervous. And you know, the reason for that is they just left you their possible once-in-a-lifetime trophy. You know, some of us are fortunate enough to have the time, the money, the drive, the whatever you want to call it, to be able to go and find trophy bucks and kill and, and have, you know, multiple deer on the wall. Uh, most people are not. I mean, there's a lot of people that's got that one deer mounted. It may take them 30 or 40 years to harvest that buck. And when they leave it in your hands, don't think they're not nervous, especially if they've never met you. So the best thing you can do, as far as that's concerned, is making sure that, that they feel comfortable with how honest you are about the way you answer their questions. I mean, y'all. I mean, y'all look at this. Somebody asked me how much, how much time it's going to take to get done with one. If I say, it, it will not take me longer than a year. If it does, something is bad wrong. I average three a week. Should take you eight months. In eight months, if it's not done, holler at me. I'll let you know exactly how many I have ahead of you. I post them all on social media as I get them done, and you'll be able to count them down up right up till yours. Okay, compare it to this. All right. What are you looking at as far as turnaround time? Well, I mean, it, it shouldn't take any longer than about four months. I mean, that's best case scenario. I think it, it'll probably be done then. I mean, you know, it's just not the same thing. When a guy's got a 160 inch deer that he just paid $6,000 to go to Illinois to go kill, that's not the answer he wants. 
Okay? All right. Information. That's the second thing based on your reputation, giving information to the customer. If you find out that you're going to be short on supplies, if you're having trouble, an example right now, it's hard to get glass deer eyes. So if, if you've got a guy that's next in line and he knows where he's at in line, keeping up with all these numbers, keeping up with everything on social media, you may want to respond and say, these two deer are finished, but so-and-so, your deer is tanned, ready to go, but the company I'm ordering from is short on glass eyes, so these deer that takes this size of eye are waiting on my eye delivery. But I've got you in mind, you're ready to go. Nine times out of 10, all you get is a thank you very much, glad to know, thanks for keeping in touch. Because that's what they want is communication. Okay, something else with information you may want to think about is uh, your cost, shipping costs. Uh, if shipping costs goes up, if you have to go up on your prices and stuff, explain that to people. Get on social media, you know, tell them, you know, this is what just happened. Give them numbers. Used to, this cost me $60, now it cost me $80. Divided by the number of deer, that comes down to $5 or $8 a piece or whatever. You know, and, and keep informed. Even if you don't go up on your retail prices, let them know your cost increases. So what happens is once you start getting up to that $50, $60, $70 dollar range, that you're having to spend more than you did a year ago, you can raise that price to 100, or, or you raise it to $100, and that customer understands, well, you know, I'm glad he waited this long, because it, you know, it's been, it's been going up on him for a year. It keeps them in the loop. They, they know what's going on before, you know, they're blindsided by a really high increase in prices all of a sudden. All right, next thing, we're going to talk about showing interest in someone's mounts. When somebody comes in the door, and this is another complaint I hear about a lot, is people take in deer and all they are, they're just, they're doing it for the money. Uh, deer hunting is my passion. I love it. I love a white-tailed deer. I respect the animal. I try to find them. I like to look for them year-round. I'm, I'm, I'm just tracking them or scouting for them. It's just fun to me. And every time somebody walks in that door, you want to act like they were your hunting buddy and they just harvested a deer with you with them. Every one of them is gonna tell you the story of their deer. So don't brush them off. You know, don't, don't just act like, okay, well, you know, this other guy, come look at the one this guy killed. Like it's actually bigger than that one. He killed it out of his truck window. You know, don't go into all that. Share that story with them. Stop what you're doing and sit down. You know, during deer season, try not to do too much work when you've got customers in there. Sit down in a chair, spend an hour or two with them if they wanna tell you the story and be amazed with them. You know what I mean? Pretend like it was your best friend. Pretend like it was you. And you know what they're going through if you've been there before. You know, the best thing you can do is make them feel like you're proud of them. You know, then they get to share that with you. And all of a sudden, you know, y'all are y'all are hunting buddies. You know, uh, that's my favorite part about having this shop. I love customers coming over here and talking deer hunting. Because, I mean, if I talk deer hunting with my wife as much as I talk with my customers, she would leave me. I promise. She would leave me and go find a guy that didn't even own a rifle. Okay, what are we gonna talk about next? How about the protection for their antlers? You know, I, I, I talked a minute ago about when they drop that deer off, how important it is to them. This is something that I do. When they drop their deer off, I always tell them, listen, I keep both my doors locked. You know what I mean? Nobody can come in here. Dogs can't wander in here and drag stuff off, which I've heard about multiple times from different taxidermists. That would, I mean, it, it terrifies me to even think about it. I'm scared enough the place is gonna catch on fire one day. I'm gonna lose all these things. It'd just be gut-wrenching. But what I tell, I give somebody the choice to be able to keep their rack until I've got their hide tanned. You know, then it's up to them if their deer gets mad if they bring the rack back to you. And it's not like you can help it if you don't have a rack. But they can keep that rack. You don't need it. It's just hanging around for you know, a year. So if they've got that rack sitting at their house, they can look at it, they can show their buddies. And if they need a cape one day, worst case scenario, they never see you again, afraid you're gonna leave the country. They've got their rack and that can't be duplicated. You know what I mean? That's a one of a kind. They can go get a, a, a cape and have it mounted up. At least, at least their horns are good. You know, at least they're okay with that. And they, they really like that option. 
I've only had two or three people ever actually take them with them, but the fact that you'll allow that, really, it, it really calms them down. And having locked doors, having a locked shop is, is very, very important. Uh, I'm gonna give y'all a little example of something. Talk about on the back end of this, we'll talk about making mistakes. There's gonna be times when either you misplace, I'm not gonna say misplace a rack. There's racks sometimes that won't fit on this board because the brow tines are too close. Well, I may set them on a shelf back there. Well, I put them in the order that they've paid. So I order these in order that they're hanging on this board. And there's been times where I may come across one that was supposed to have been four deer ago. And I'm like, oh no, you know, I need to go ahead and order that for the next thing. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show y'all a text from a few days ago. This is a girl that I know that, that I'm good friends with. I mean, it's not like she's just a random person or anything, but I took a, a little bitty rack from her about, this was probably two and a half years ago. It's been a while. It was her first little buck and she sawed the antlers off at the bird. Okay, instead of keeping the skull cap, she just sawed the antlers off at the, at the bottom. Uh, a while later, months, months afterwards, she wanted to know if I could do anything with them. And uh, we got to talking and she really wanted them done in a European mount, wanted them put on a skull. So this is actually, actually what I'm working on right now. Uh, I've got them remounted on there, epoxied in, done a little bit of, you know, detail work here or there to it. Uh, but I've had that here for two years. And what I have done, I took the antlers, tagged them with her name, and I carried them up to the house to rebuild a skull cap out of some Bondo. I like keeping my Bondo at the house because it, it won't freeze down you know, up there like it will down here in the wintertime. Uh, well, I just forgot about it. It's been sitting up there in my house for almost two years. Completely forgot. She never called me, contacted me, anything else. I ain't thought nothing about it. Well, she sent me this message. This was a couple of days ago. It says, how is my little deer mount going? I said, well, if I hadn't have forgotten about it, it would have been finished a long time ago. The skull is rebuilt and the plaque is ready to go. I just have to put it all together. I'll try to go ahead and work on it tomorrow. She said, okay, no worries. I know it takes a while and you've been busy. Just wondering if it was turning out okay. And I said, no, it shouldn't have taken me near that long. And it's still setting right where I left it, out of sight, out of mind. She said, well, I'm not trying to rush you. Thanks for doing that for me. I know it will look beautiful. And that, that right there, I mean, it's happened to me. I'm not gonna say two years. There's been a few that, that I've, set to the side and, and forgot about, especially odd jobs like that. That's not a normal shoulder mount or a normal European mount. Uh, but the, the customers that, that have used me and that know me, they don't think about it. They don't worry about it, you know? And when, when they do get in contact with me thinking, man, I wonder if he's even still got that rack. Then once I explain to them the situation, you know, they're okay with it. And you can't ask for more than that because there's going to be mistakes. That's why honesty is so important. And your reputation is so important because when you do mess up, that's all you've got to fall back on. And if you lie to somebody during that mistake, they're going to call you on it every time because they're going to know. I mean, they'll go on social media in a minute and say, you know, hey, guys, like, how long does it take to you know, get a, a base built for some deer antlers. You're gonna have five taxidermists reply in a few minutes. How about a day? <laughs> you know, so, okay, well, he's had mine for two years. So anyway, guys, I hope y'all enjoy this. Hope it was helpful. It, it's something I think is starting out a taxidermy shop. Wish I had known this day one going into it, but this'll, this'll, it'll help y'all on the front end uh, be able to, to get the confidence to deal with your customers for one. Don't worry about the quality of your work. If there's people bringing you deer heads, they're good enough. Just keep that in mind. You will continue to get better, but you're only going to get better the more deer heads you do. So, I mean, you're not going to harvest enough deer yourself to practice on to get that good. 
you're gonna have to take deer. So if you're thinking you're trying to wait to get good before you start taking deer, don't. If you do a several starting out and people don't really like them, don't ever come back, they took a chance on you because you were the cheapest guy. And that's on them, that's not on you. Because that's the honest truth. You know, and if they ask you, why are you so cheap? Say, well, I ain't done but 10. If you trust me to do it, I'd love to try. You know, I've never had anybody outright tell me they didn't like the job I did, but I would gladly give them their money back if they didn't. Uh, and as long as they know that going into it, usually they're okay with it, especially if you're charging a reasonable price. If you've got to start out charging $350 a deer head, do it. You know, if, it, if you can get, if you've got a full-time job and you can do this on the side, if you can get 20 deer in a year, to practice on, that's going to get you a long way ahead of the game. Uh, especially if you watch some of my other videos, if you pay enough attention to those videos while you're mounting that first and second, third deer, it's going to help you visualize what you're supposed to be doing rather than having to guess like I did and try to learn some of this stuff that I couldn't find on YouTube. You know, that just wasn't available. So I'm trying to make all these videos, let people skip all those mistakes and go straight into some success you know, and a little bit of, a little bit of financial security. Uh, but, but sure enough, uh, take the deer, take them in. If somebody will let you have a shot at it, get it and, and do it. Because like I said, that reputation, as long as you're honest with people, you will have a business built on that honesty that has zero to do with the quality of those shoulder mounts. I can promise you, they won't even care. They'll tell you, I don't care. I don't care what you do, how much you charge. I don't care what it looks like. I'm bringing mine to you. And that's just because they like you. It's just the way it is. Anyway, guys, I hope y'all have a great afternoon. And hopefully I'll have something else I can show y'all, you know, in the near future. There's a couple different videos. Matter of fact, I'm about to put some feet together, make a gun rack. I made video of that. Guys, we'll see y'all next time.